안녕하십니까. 어, 본격적인 이탈리아 디자인 데이 웨비나를 시작하기에 앞서서 줌 프로그램 사용에 대해서 간략하게 안내를 해드리겠습니다. 어, 제가 공유하는 스크린 화면을 어, 집중을 해주시기 바랍니다. 어, 지금 보시는 것은 줌 프로그램 화면 구성입니다. 어, 이탈리안 디자인 데이 웨비나는 줌 프로그램을 통해서 진행이 되는데요. 줌 프로그램의 전반적인 어, 화면 구성을 설명을 해드리겠습니다. 어, 이쪽 보시는 분, 맨 아래쪽 하단 왼쪽 사운드 온 오프 아이콘이 있고요. 이제 비디오가 이제 그 아이콘이 온 오프 되어 있는 분을 확인하실 수 있으며 그 오른쪽에는 참가자 파티스턴트 리스트를 확인할 수 있는 곳이 있고 그 다음에 채팅 온라인 스탯을 할수 있는 아이콘을 확인하실 수 있습니다. 그리고 어, 맨 오른쪽에 글로브 모양의 통역 아이콘이 있는데요. 여기에서 듣고 싶은 언어를 세팅을 할수 있습니다. 어, 지금 보시는 것은 듣고 싶은 언어를 설정하는 방법인데요. 오른쪽 하단 통역 글로브 아이콘을 클릭을 하면 세 가지 옵션이 있습니다. 어, 한국 참가자 및 청중분들께서는 한글로 선택을 하시면 이태리에서 발표 시에 어, 한국 어, 통역사의 언어를 들으실 수 있기 때문에 한국 분들 같은 경우는 한국어로 설정을 해주시면 될것 같습니다. 이제 본 행사 이탈리아 디자인 대 웨비나를 시작하게 되면 발표자 이외의 참가자 분들께서는 오디오를 뮤트로 바꿔주시길 부탁드리며 발언을 하실 때만 오디오를 온으로 켜주시길 부탁드립니다. 이제 영어로 다시 설명을 해드리도록 하겠습니다. Hello, uh, this is the quick announcement from the operating team of IDD webinar. Before we officially start the Italia Design Day webinar event, I give you a brief guide on using the Zoom program. Uh, first, I explain the overall screen configuration of the Zoom program. There's a sound with um, list of participants and etc. Please check accordingly and you will figure out what they are quite easily. Second, interpretation language settings. This webinar will be conducted as a simultaneous interpreter. Please look at the screen. At the bottom of the screen icon, you have the option to select the language you want to hear. For Italian participants and audience, please choose English. If you set it up like that, you can listen to the audio of the Italian presenter's audio and English interpreter audio. Third, audio and off. Now when we start the Italian Design Day webinar, the main event, for participants, please change your audio to mute when you speak please turn on the audio. Uh, let me finish the announcement of the menu. Uh, Nicola, the first secretary, will officially start the webinar. Thank you. Annyeonghaseyo, buongiorno, whether you're in Italy. Thank you very much for joining us once more in celebrating Italian design. Uh, this is Nicola Del Medico speaking. I'm uh, first secretary at the Embassy of Italy in, in Seoul, and um, I will be moderating our talk today. Before leaving the floor to the speakers, I would like to introduce and thank them for their participation. Uh, thank you, first of all, to the director of the Italian Trade Agency, Vincenzo Cadi. Thank you also to our special guests as Italian Design Day Ambassador, architect Giulio Cappellini. And thank you to the representatives of the Arts Collective Kiner, Peck Soli, An Siyong, Che Sangu, Li Yula. Let us also stress once more that we are here today on the occasion of the Italian Design Day, the annual event when the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation together with the Ministry of Culture, celebrate and promote one of the key sectors of excellence of the so-called Made in Italy. 
The theme for this fifth edition of the Design Day is Project and Materials, New Challenges for the Sustainable Restart of Made in Italy. Today, very soon, we are going to meet a group of young Korean designers, architects and fashion managers that have set up Keener, a platform, an arts collective that aims to give a voice to those that are keen to step out of their comfort zone and be influenced by different social and cultural environments. Kinner is also a bridge between Italy and Korea because the Kinner members studied in Italy and now are working between Italy and Korea, exploring new opportunities for two-way contamination in arts and design. We will find out more about this project today and we will be able to ask questions together with a very special guest our Italian design ambassador, Giulio Cappellini, that is joining us today from Italy. Now, please let me leave the floor to our first virtual host today, Mr. Vincenzo Cali, the director of the Italian trade agency in Seoul, who is speaking live from uh, our wonderful showcase in Gangnam, High Street, Italy. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nicola. Uh, I have to say that it's a great pleasure for me to attend this second stage of the Italian Design Days. Second stage because yesterday we had our first seminar and yesterday we had the opportunity of talking about, talking about Italian design with Giulio Cappellini and some Korean distinguished guests. Uh, today we are going to talk uh, about Italian design from a different point of view, from a different perspective, which is the experience of young Korean uh, and Italian designers and architects, or so also artists, who have studied in Italy and uh, now are active in Korea, in Italy, or, or somewhere. Uh, you know that traditionally there has been a big number of Korean students uh, moving to Italy and Italian students uh, moving to Korea. And I believe that uh, uh, when they come back home, uh, or better if they move permanently in Italy or in Korea, they can give a fundamental contribution to increase our bilateral relations and not only cultural but also commercial. So I'm very curious to learn something more about the, the, the experience in Italy of these young designers, artists, and architects. And in particular, I'm, I'm very curious to learn something more how having studied in, in design, architecture, or arts in Italy has influenced their professional background and their professional life. So thank you so much from Street Italia and um, uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Vincenzo, for your remarks. Um, before leaving the floor to Kinner for the uh, um, presentation, let me remind that their talk will be followed by uh, what I'm sure will be very sharp and clever remarks by um, Giulio Cappellini. So now let's turn to what Kinner has prepared for us today. Thanks a lot, guys. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to introduce Kina at this Italian Design Day webinar. 
I'm Peck Sulhi, a leader of Kino. I majored in architecture and urban design in Korea and started interior design in Italy. Now I'm in fashion marketing and FMB space branding. First, I want to introduce how to Kino started. Kino, clean in Kino means having or showing great perception and sight and implies keen eyes. We create meanings with the people with a keen sense of discovering what others cannot see. And people with eyes who question the phenomena that are overlooked and misunderstood. Thus, Kina's motto is more than misty eyes. It means that when invisible things are broadly expressed, they are things that have been seen more clearly than anything else. Kina is made of young people who are learning and producing in various fields, including art and design based in Milan and Korea. Also, all members are Koreans who have lived abroad, who have resided in Italy and other countries. With this common experience, Kina's main target has become Koreans living abroad, and the goal is to create content that can deeply relate to their stories. In the process, we have a vision to actively share the new values that Kina discovers and freely from a space for communication. We hope that the opportunity for communication between Koreans will increase through a bridge called Kina, and we dream of exchanging various cultures in various parts of the world beyond the expansion of communication among Koreans. And we divided the keywords by focusing on the gaze. And Kina first started with the COVID-19 in 2020. Due to the pandemic, the period of lockdown and quarantine allowed us to meet online beyond the time difference between Italy and Korea and started creating a Kino's Italian in Identity and Magazine. The first issue of this magazine was published in October 2020, followed by the second issue in December and the third issue in uh, April 2021. Some people communicated with each other in late night and early morning at different times, making the platform called Kino more solid in the process. As I said in the introduction, Kina is a group of friends with various identities growing in Milan and Korea, people born in Korea and emigrated to Italy and young, people born in Lisbon, Italy and people studying in Italy and others gathered together. Besides beside the design study, we have a direct background, different backgrounds, including management, architecture, video and marketing. First, I wanted to invite um, the So Young, who moved to Italy from young age and live as a designer. Good afternoon, I'm An So Young. Great to see you. Before, I was a member of Kina's content production and layout team, and now I'm probably in charge of a back, of, back office job. As for the content I produced, I co-worked with Yula to produce a content called Nomad's Belonging, who covers Korean ethnics in foreign country at the first issue of the magazine. And in second issue, the story of an ordinary person series contained the story of an office worker who has finished studying abroad in Italy. As you already heard, I start studying abroad in high school and graduating from college and having a job. After staying in Italy for 13 years, I returned to Korea. When I say I stayed in a foreign country for about 13 years since high school, almost everyone thinks that I have the mindset and language schools like Italian. But that's not true. As a foreigner in Italy, I felt I was an alien and tried to uh, apply to Italian society, like uh, starting everything from scratch. Because of my background like this, I think I wanted to include a lot of perspective of a stranger as a foreigner in my content, because I experienced a similar situation. All of the 13 years have been meaningful, but to me, I wanted to share my high school experience that could be considered the most unique of my career. At the time, study abroad is a young, 
in young age was a still boom, but going to Italy was a very rare case. In May 2008, I arrived in Florence, uh, Italy. At that time, I think I felt like I was on a trip as I was spending time in hot summer and eating a lot of gelato ice cream and looking around the beautiful city. And one day I became a high school student. To explain about the Italian high school education, high schools have five years. It was uh, really long and difficult, so I kept thinking I could be a middle school graduate until the result of the graduation exams came out. And there's academic probation. Admission is open to everyone, but graduation is relatively difficult. So if you don't reach your average grade, you will fail and you have to repeat the same grade. School subjects are filled with uh, practical subjects for major uh, along with the basic subjects taught in general high schools. I was taught various subjects and among them the subject I especially loved and not so familiar in Korea but something that is mandatory is a uh, art history. And first of all, for foreigners who are not good at Italian language, apart from the Quran itself, compared to textbooks full of texts, art history books are very grateful subject. And if artworks have visual elements, so I think it was relatively easy to understand the background issues or events of the time through them. Also, since the city I lived in is Florence, so it was a very good environment to directly experience historical relics and ancient remnants that you see in textbooks. It is a place called the City of Art, especially the sanctuary of Renaissance culture. So it was good to see the masterpieces of the era I was standing at the time. Also, just a short distance from the Florence, buildings from various eras are still well preserved in nearby small and medium-sized cities, so it was easy to see them. Most of the theoretical subjects are taught at the same pace as each other. In this way, uh, you can understand how the various fields other than art, politics, philosophy, physics, and invention in a particular, particular era, then you are learning are different from each other. But moving the same trend and what kind of the correlations is created within them, this approach was very unfamiliar to me. Because in Korea, I was just started with the textbook, but in Italy, this approach of the studying a single event from multiple angles seems quite fresh to me. I don't know for sure, but I think that it's a kind of the difference between Eastern and Western cultures rather than a difference between Korea and Italy. And in fact, students submit a thesis for the Italian high school graduation exam. I have to choose a topic and find a connection to these topics from each academic discipline. Therefore, uh, I choose the physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, and history, and I integrate it into one thesis. So I think this way uh, blows the boundaries between domains and allows to discover that everything is connected and interrelated. Knowing that there are so many points of connection, I also wanted to break free from the clearly defined boundaries without realizing it. So now the convergence between the various fields has become a natural phenomenon, but I think that Italy has been thinking the kind of the convergence without any clear boundary since ancient times. So scientists could become a painter, sculptor, philosopher, and a doctor. By sharing my high school experience, I think we, we will talk more about how to build up the basic knowledge needed for design rather than a design project. It is a very small story 
but I think that uh, multidisciplinary education in Italy is a really good opportunity for me to do design now in Korea. Thank you. Thank you, So Young, for sharing your stories. So Kino has the four key activities like interview research, artwork, and advertisement. Kino, its main content is people. So the interview is always the core of the Kino. In every issue of the magazine, we listen to and deliver stories from the people who fit the topic. The first issue told the story of Moon Ji Sun, who has taught about the identity between Korean family culture and social culture of Italy. The second issue told the story of Isu the third issue delivered the story of Alex, an Egyptian Korean American video director. And in addition, we interpret the issues of the Italian and Korean society from Kina's point of view and deliver industry and content. We interpreted special terms that only Koreans can understand or phenomena that can only be understood by living in Italy. For example, we had a project called Gukbong, which means the excessive patriotism. Now I want to invite Choi song who organized this content. And this content is planned by Choi song Hello everyone, I'm Choi song I'd like to do research at Kino. As Sori said, we want to show terminologies and cultures unfamiliar to foreigners. So I talked with uh, Sori and Yula to talk about this cookbook uh, called Excessive Patriotism. Unlike fashion or graphic designers, I majored in fashion communication and marketing at IED. For three years, I was born and grown in a small village called Tongyong. While stayed in Milan for three years, I had a lot of experience and I experienced many hardships and trails, but uh, it was really meaningful. And I wrote the grab which impressed the entire content and I really liked the grab. And this kind of the experiences is really helpful to me. I think that uh, this kind of things is not unfamiliar um, to you. So I wanted to make a uh, one graph to increase your ideas. So the one ideas connected to other ideas, and then they are connected to become a research. And there are quite many ways to realize this research research. So I divided my favorite research work into three ways. First, I learned how to do research on social phenomena. For example, while studying Black Lives Matter movement, I learned that its cultural backgrounds and what's the cultural influence. Second, I studied the influence of the particular person on the current society. And finally, a lot of how to research on the origin of social terms or the uh, phenomenon. For example, in USA, Lams Davis, a jazz artist, has uh, a lot of influences in music and fashion. And I studied what kind of the influences was made by the musician. And finally, I researched uh, the social issues. So this one is, is uh, my thesis. That's the relationship between uh, the consumerism and the fashion. So uh, this kind of the method, research method is really good for me to deepen my studies. And collecting all these research process and reflecting them on a practical project was the most funny things. And it made me realize how, may, how much time and effort is pulled into one project. So in conclusion, the studying abroad in Italy it's an experience that gave me a deeper and more valuable understanding than anyone else. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jong-woo, for telling your story. Kino collaborated with a young artist and students working in Milan and Korea, introducing the work and new brands. We introduced the short novels based on the loneliness they felt and artworks, including drawings portrayed the unfamiliar reality. We published the first issue as a demo version in the format of a newspaper and distributed it in Milan and Korea for free. From the second issue, we had a difficulty to publish a paper magazine during COVID-19 pandemic, so we produced and published an online website. At Kino, we communicate in four ways. First, we are uploading various contents through the SNS Instagram. Through Instagram, we show the story that only Kino can tell through video or artwork. Also, through Kino Sound, we regularly set a theme on the SoundCloud, select the song that fits the theme, and create a mixtape so that anyone can listen to it according to their mood. Due to the prolonged pandemic, it's difficult to conduct offline activities. So we have focused on contents that can be handled indoors. In particular, in the third issue, we produced the video contents and published both interviews and artwork through the YouTube channel. Now I do want to invite Yula, responsible for contents and video production. Good afternoon, I'm Yula, born in Italy, who takes pictures and makes videos. From young age, I fell in love with the robots and machines and especially cameras. From then on, I opened my eyes to the beauty of the photography. I begged my mom and dad to buy it for me. So I promised with my mom to memorize 2,000 English words. And she fought it for me after I fulfilled the price. I wanted to buy a film camera because I liked it, the color of the film. But my father said that mirrorless was good for practice. So I used to it and studied to how to correct the color. So I started to study uh, photography at 16. So uh, I found my own warm color. In addition to photography, I try to work with animation and various art forms. As you can see here, I was designed a character and used the Google map to tell the story. If our privacy is protected 100%, it's a kind of the cutout pattern job. I integrated my experience to Kino, where I am in charge of social media contents and making videos. I think so many people have made efforts to introduce Korean culture result in a boom in the world. To be frank, I grew up in Italy, so my life was not easy for me to live as an Asian in Europe. I tried to find my identity if I was an Italian or a Korean. The answer was quite simple, but it took a long time for me to accept it. I was hoping it would be one of the two, black and, or like a black and white. I met unexpectedly good Italian friends and Korean Italians similar to me and discovered a new identity in itself. I realized two things are not different and it's a kind of the phenomena of the new generation and by opening my eyes to the world i realized that the global trend was also changing there is no longer single identity by default identities are various in a variety of the cultures i started to accept it and interpreted myself anew Even in the world of the fashion, there are various styles and more freedom than I was young. 
individualism is more spreading. So I plan to continue my work and in the future, hoping that everyone will be friends while doing works to break down the barriers to cultural exchanges. That's my vision. Thank you. Thank you, Yula, for sharing your story. We continue to introduce the magazine to the restaurants, stores, and schools where there is a lot of interaction between Koreans and Italians. And recently, we are able to introduce the Kino to the Milan-based Vitrova Studio. So until now, we introduced the Kino, what is the starting point, what activities we do. And some people think that we are working at Kino, maybe naive and childish, but such we wanted to show ourselves as they are even though looking like a clumsy and ch childish. It's bold and low, so we can try without any worries. You wanted to see the behind the scene and perform various activities in the future. Thank you for your listening. If you have questions, please raise your question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much uh to Kina for their um, very interesting presentation um now i would like to ask um architect giulio cappellini that uh we know has a very keen eye for new and young talents to um to make some comments on uh, on on this presentation so please giulio thank, cappellini. You. thank you very much uh, mr del medico and Yes, very, very interesting presentation, very contemporary, and they think that is what we need today. And I really strongly believe in this sort of cultural contamination, because also I see a lot of common points between the culture of Korea and the culture of Italy. No? And I think that really is, so is really very, very important to speak, to have, this, uh, to have always this kind of connection because I think that only through international connection, we can really build something new. Uh, you know, first question is because I'm very curious and I want to ask uh, to this group of fantastic people, uh, how was born the idea of Kina? No? What is on the base of Kina? So let me answer your question. Uh, the idea of Kino uh, was created with the thought that that uh, you know we want to uh, want to have a space or platform to express our situation where we were born and what we felt and experienced as a foreigner and a stranger. Okay, very, very interesting. And, you know, uh, again, no, we always talk a bit about this relationship, uh, you know, between Italy and Korea. Uh, I, I want to ask you, which uh, cultural connections do you see between Italy and Korea? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, there could be, uh, maybe or may not be a cultural connection between the two countries. Our ultimate goal is not creating a connection in everything between Italy and Korea. The main goal and the concept that we should not forget is that Kina uh, wants to discover something invisible on the surface uh, in our daily life, uh, but something that we can discover through uh, Kina's eyes. I think culture of Korea and Italy itself is one of the means for such connection. Uh, let me add that. We have an identity as a Korean and the emotions and the feelings that we felt, uh, I think that was manifested and we learned more when we lived in, in Italy. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, yes. And because, uh, uh, you know, when I was in Korea, I was in Korea a few times in the past and I hope really to be back quite soon because I love your country. Really, I was astonished because I think that in Korea there is a huge heritage, a huge history and a huge quality no, of this heritage. And so I found really 
uh, a similar approach to Italy for sure. East is different from West for sure. Each country has a totally different, uh, a totally different history, a totally different heritage. But I think that this idea of the quality, this idea of the control of details. I think that is common to the Korean history and to the Italian history, absolutely. You know, you spoke before about interviews, hard work, research, and advertisement, no? And uh, which is the real value of all these elements? Uh, yes. As we explained before, basically, we want to share uh, people's stories stories about the people who are living out of their original boundaries for any reason. So as the cultural realm is expanding, not just the uh, physical realm, I think these people can look at um, everything from a more diverse uh, perspective. And that was the core of the interview. And as you know, uh, speaking of art, art has, uh, I think it's a, a very good tool to uh, express uh, complex uh, concepts. That's why we put uh, art as the second uh, artwork, as our second uh, element. And I think emotion uh, is an element that cannot be uh, easily put into words. Uh, but at the same time, we believe research is the most basic tool for understanding and classifying something. And it, it enables you to know um, uh, based on fact, um, that uh, what's going on in the world. So we need uh, research uh, because we need something scientific and also something on objective. And ad advertising uh, was planned focusing on the area of opportunity. As heard in our presentation, uh, initially uh, we wanted to give the designers who are starting their own brands uh, uh, a small space that can make their advertisements. Uh, Thank you. Good. Uh, I really like uh, very much this approach to research. I think that it's really uh, on the right way, definitely. You know, in the last few years, you now we're just speaking about the real communication and the virtual communication, and more and more in, during this period where, due to the pandemic, we cannot uh, travel and so and so. No? Now, for example, yesterday and today, we are working on a virtual communication. And uh, what do you think about the future? Which will be the right balance between real and virtual communication? Uh, as for this question, I think I have a lot to say. Kino uh, actually started when Italy went into lockdown. So it was not really easy to do everything virtually, as you know, but I think we successfully turned this crisis into opportunity. We adapted to the changes in the world in new ways. As time went by, the boundaries between the two methods have been blurred and collapsed. When Korean and Italian members work together like us, uh, even if we didn't have pandemic, I think we would be working like we do now. But there are differences between these two methods. Real physical encounters are still the most important part of our daily living. Touching, seeing and feeling are essential to our life. And I think remote communication allows us to discover and connect to other dimensions that are uh, may be difficult to do equally in physical reality. But what is most important is that we must respond flexibly uh, to the changes and trends of the world. No, perfect, thank you very much. Sorry, now my last question. So which are the next steps for Kina? Okay, the next step for the Kina is that uh, as we thought about the third and fourth issues, we thought about you know, how we communication, make a communication and we thought about the language is issues and we thought about that there's a physical time issues. So in the next step for the Kina, in Milan and in Korea, uh, we, we want to expand our respective identity as a keener. Now, uh, we had a, a base, initial base in Milan first. 
so we wanted to expand there first but as we ex expanded and we have the base also in korea we want to expand our uh, identity in, uh, and also the base in korea so we are trying to find uh, uh we want to have uh, align the, the our italian base and korean base together and make them go together and the fashion street in korea and the fashion rodeo street in korea and milano fashion streets uh we want to see what kind of people are there and we want to show uh say uh, show that in real time and that that is something only we can do so that's one of the ideas we have for the next step and also for the korean culture like the taekwondo k-pop or martial arts uh we want to show the the uh the, uh, the show the korean's perspectives uh in those in this in the traditional korean arts and how italians see those in the korean uh, cultures so the next step is that we want to go beyond time difference between Italy and Korea and show everything real time. Good. So yeah. very, very good and compliments because I think it is a, a beautiful project and so I wish you the best because I think that again, today the most important thing is to be very contemporary and I think that really Kina is a very interesting and very contemporary project and is what we really need worldwide today. So really compliments again. I think that uh, you will really work very well for the future. And really anything that you need from Italy, I'm here. And so any connection that you need, I'm here. And uh, I will be more than happy uh, to give my help if you need uh, of anything here from Italy. So again, bravo, as we say in Italian, and uh, go ahead in uh, this way. So, and uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, your presentation. That I think that has been very, very interesting. And I like very much uh, when I see so young people very interested in a new project. Because I really think that today we don't need of new things, but we need of new ideas, of new concepts, of new projects. And I think that really Kina goes definitely in this way. So thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, again, my support is uh, always here, anything you need. Grazie mille. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think really uh, these congratulations by one of the uh, of our main uh, designers is priceless. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Kine for the um, uh, presentation, which is full of, of fresh um, ideas. Um, I would like to turn now to some questions from the audience that are um, very much focused on your experience of um, living and studying in Italy and then uh, trying to to bridge um, the two countries when it comes to uh, your work experience. Um, so the first question is um, to what extent do you think uh, that your study experience in Italy uh, is now an asset uh, in your work in, uh, in Korea? Uh, could... Yes, I'm going to I'm going to um, to repeat it again. Um, to what extent do you think that studying in Italy uh, is a plus? Is a, is an asset uh, when it comes to your work uh, life here in Korea? Italy is a job. Uh, so studying in Italy allow me to learn a new language and also enjoy a completely different culture from Korean culture and overcome uh, new challenges as you start a new life there. But I think the biggest asset is that it helped me understand the world better and more. It's a new step that allowed me to open my eyes to a wider world and think about uh, bigger dreams. 
Thank you very much. And um, the other question is pretty much related to the first one. So would you advise to um, another um, pers prospective designer or architect, so to somebody that wanted to study design or architecture to do that in Italy? Uh, I shared my pres um, experience in my, the presentation. There are a lot of you know, positive experience and towards positive stories to tell them. So I would like to recommend Italy to as a study destination for them. And the approach you get to learn in Italy is different from what you get to learn in Korea. And I think that is worth the try. And the Italy, the country, has a long history of uh, culture, um, uh, design. So design and uh, culture are uh, blended naturally in the actual setting. So you can actually uh, live there uh, and you can naturally, and there are a lot of um, opportunities to get to uh, exposed to the uh, culture and art and design there. So you get to, uh, you are asked a lot of questions that you never thought in your daily life. And I think, you know, that gives you an opportunity to think a lot of a bit. So I would like to recommend to study in Italy. So let me add to what you know, So Young said. Uh, there is, and there's a fashion week going on in Italy on a constant basis. And there's a Venice Biennale. And there are various events that you can get a lot of inspiration in Italy, in Korea. Uh, yeah, you go to exhibition only where you're interested in art. But there are a lot of you know, art uh, places that you can get exposed to without you know, intending to do that. So there's a lot of ex um, opportunity to get exposed naturally in Italy uh, about design and culture. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Um, what can Italian design learn from Korean design and the other way around? Uh, I will answer in English. First of all, I think we can't define an answer in, uh, in design as well as art. When Korea is a country that grew up vastly in a short time, you just can understand by looking at the city, the buildings, the shops. Uh, the shop that I used to go to three years ago, uh, it, uh, it, three years after it disappeared. And Koreans are not afraid of uh, change. Everything is so fast in Korea. They are used to it, I think. They are so beware of trends and that's the characteristic of Korean people. They don't cling uh, to the past. They constantly tear down and create. Sometimes it's so sad to see how fast it transforms. However, it is also surprising to see people constantly changing and adapting for beauty. Although, uh, despite these changes, uh, there seems to be uh, an ability where tradition and modernity can be harmonized, nature and artificial combined, not just recreate, but also to fit together. The concept of designer and design is born in Italy, so Koreans would have learned more from you. So. But if you ask to pick uh, something to learn from Koreans, I think I suppose it will be, if I could say, uh, formative harmony with nature, elegant and rustic smartness, and aesthetic beauty, uh, dynamic beauty characteristic, characteristic, I think. Thanks. That's uh, fascinating. 
uh, picture that you uh, you just painted. Um, another question: um, What are the main challenges you faced in being a foreign student in in Italy? 어 저도 영어로 대답할게요. So let me uh, answer in English. Most students will say they had problems with overcoming the language barrier or the different culture differences. But for me personally, the hardest part for me was being apart from my loved ones, my family. So regardless of what country you're from and what country you're going to, it's almost certain that you end up feeling like an outsider at least like some of the time when you're abroad. So, however, personally, it was really easy for me to get along with the Italian people. Uh, I think there is this unseen uh, link between us Koreans and Italians. They make us really get along with each other for no special reason. And also, for personally, most Italians are really helpful and really sympathetic in general. Very glad to hear that. Uh, I must say that as a as a foreigner here in Korea, also in general, Koreans are are uh, are very helpful to uh, to us. Um, now I have a um, practical question uh, from the audience. Uh, where can we find the physical copies of Kinner? Of the magazine, I guess they're asking. Could you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Yes. Um, where can we find oh, the, 저희가, the physical copies of the magazine? 그, 그 어떤, 그 잡지를 어디서 바, 그 physical copy the first, the first issue. Um, from the second, we changed to the website because of the pandemic. So, but we are thinking to, in the future, to make other copies. So, stay tuned. To add on, like, if you are living in Milan, we have distributed our first print in some of the Korean restaurants and Korean places. But in Seoul, we only distributed some of them. So in the future, if we do another publication, we will plan on doing more and it will, it will be available in the future. Thank you very much. Um, I have another um, question, uh, which perhaps can involve also uh, Mr. Cappellini if he wishes so. Um, uh, and it goes, uh, between Europeans, do you differentiate Italian design from others? And do Italians try to keep Italian style? But, you know, I think that for sure each country has a different story, a different heritage and so on. So in the past, we are speaking about Italian design, French design, North European design, German design, and so on. So now, more and more, we are speaking about design also. If I think that the most important thing is to keep our history, our heritage. For me, it's very important to understand if in this moment uh, I'm working with a designer or an architect coming from Milan or from Rome or coming from Helsinki or coming from, uh, I don't know, Cologne. So I think that really, for sure, we have to try when we do a product, uh, we have to try to uh, design an international product. But again, <clears throat> I always say that we have to look to the future without killing our history. So there are still differences between the design of different countries. Maybe uh, if I think, for example, to Europe, the Italian design is different from the North European design in terms of use of the materials, in terms of palette of color, and so and so. More and more speaking about Italian design, we are not speaking only about designer and architects, but we are speaking also about uh, industries, about brands. And now the main Italian brands, they cooperate with designers coming from all over the world. So again, this sort of cultural contamination is really very, very important. That's why I think, for example, for a young student or for a young designer coming from Korea to have an experience to study in Italy, it's 
really very interesting because they can get in touch with this made in Italy, with the Italian industries and stuff. And this is, I think, a huge experience. The same is for uh, if an Italian designer or an Italian student can have an experience uh, in another country in the world. So again, more and more we are going to design back to the global design, but I think that really the local culture is still very important. Would you like to add something on uh, on that, uh, Kinner? Uh, otherwise, we can take probably the last question for today before wrapping up. Um, what are the main challenges in your work experience as a graduate of a foreign university? So let me answer in Korean. So after graduating from foreign university and working as a designer in Korea, and I think it's you know, similar to um, uh, the, the main challenge is that is balancing uh, a design philosophy that uh, you learn from Italian school and you get naturally exposed in Italy and balancing with unpredictable work issues and problems you face in reality. For example, when I was in school, and uh, you when you are given uh, space, you decide the shape, color, and material focus uh, and focusing on the mood and the story and come up with a uh, story. Uh, and the, um, the artwork and the production and the result comes out after everything makes sense. But in Korea, uh, you have to make a practical research on a target audience and the current trend and what will work for Korean rather than why and concept of the design. And uh, market the matter and the the materials and the market research the price of material to be used for the space and and um how i'm going to supply electricity to this uh, space this um practical issues or realistic were the more concern for me uh, when i do the design uh, rather than um thinking about the lighting design first uh, for instance, when I announced the concept of putting a concept store in a space full of cactus into uh, Galleria Victoria Emmanuel and pushed a collage full of fun imagination. But in practice, I have to think of where and how to put these cactuses and how, I, uh, what kind of you know, lighting I'm going to apply to highlight these uh, cactuses. In the process, in the school, you learned uh, about uh, you. Uh, the, the biggest challenge for me is that uh, uh, you, uh, you, there are some of the areas that were compressed and thought were essential and that you, you keep that alive when you are in school, but that is omitted and skipped it, uh, in reality. Uh, and when I try myself to focus on the details and the biggest challenge for me is that I have to choose the things that are easier in practice than beauty and philosophy of the designer that I have trained myself. When, when I am uh, in Italy, Italy uh, there are uh, you know, very you know, beautiful scenes that gave me inspiration, but you have to uh, find books, you go to exhibitions, and you have to make intentional efforts to get the uh, inspiration. And that's the challenge for me in Korea, working uh, in Korea. Thank you, Soli. Thank you to uh, all the keener and to uh, Giulio Cappellini again for, uh, for uh, joining us today to Vincenzo Cali. Uh, let's uh, wrap up this, um, this event, this final event of the fifth edition of the Italian Design Day. We have new and fresh food for thought on how Italian and Korean designers can positively uh, impact on each other. Let's hope, because I feel that all of us want to do that as soon as possible, that we will be able to meet offline uh, very soon, that we will be able to organize events where we can interact in person. But for now, uh, let me thank you very much again for your uh, virtual participation and uh, see you in person at the next Italian Design Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.
Bye bye, grazie, a presto. <ride> grazie mille. Grazie. Grazie.